So you're looking to get a big clean reverb from your sound source or vocals. The issue comes up when you add a big reverb to something is that sometimes it can lose clarity, the depth, even the punch of the sound source can be lost. Well, right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a technique, not even using pre-delay or reverb times to kind of give you that big reverb sound without losing that clarity, that depth, and that punch that you still desire in the original sound source. Check this out. So right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna listen to this original vocal and with this vocal, there is a lot of reverb on it. I did this on purpose for the exaggeration of this video. Listen closely to this vocal with a lot of reverb on it. It's like six in the morning. You told me you running late. You still there recording. I respect it, I know the rules. I know it's important. I know the music comes first, but sometimes I wish you was human. So as you listen to that vocal, it's a lot of reverb. It even feels like some of the resonance is uh, building up with the entire sound because sometimes when those big moments happen or the vocal gets louder, the reverb also gets louder and it kind of piles on top of each other, muddying up everything in the sound source for the most part. Now, what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you a technique and you may have heard of it. I'm going to side chain the reverb or duck the reverb. Basically what's gonna happen is every time that the vocal is heard by the reverb, it's going to be compressed. And when there is no sound or no audio, that reverb is gonna come up, causing the sound to bloom and open up and fill in the spaces in your mix and also make it also feel like there's more depth. I'm gonna show you how I set this whole thing up, but let's just take a listen to it for the most part and then I'll break down exactly how I achieve this sound and how you could do it in your DAW as well. Let's do it. Okay, so right now what I want you to do is, I want you to listen to this sound with this big reverb on, and I want you to pay very close attention to the spaces, meaning the parts where there is no audio. I want you to feel how this reverb feels when there is no audio there and it blooms. Check this out. Oh my gosh, are you like watching my video? Did you know you can comment, like, and subscribe? Okay, don't skip, okay, don't skip. Okay, back to your video, I'm sorry. It's like six in the morning. You told me you running late, you still there recording I respect it, I know the rules, I know it's important I know the music comes first, but sometimes I wish you was human So what you're hearing is when the vocal is actually playing it's being compressed. The reverb, just the reverb is being compressed. And when there's no audio, it allows or the reverb basically comes back up. It's uncompressed, thus filling in the space and really giving you the sense of depth, making the reverb feel a little bit more back like I kind of want it to feel without disrupting that clarity. It's compressing the reverb, thus allowing the original signal to have more fidelity, more clarity, more punch and shine, and then letting the reverb tastefully just add to the space. I love this technique. I'm gonna show you exactly how I set this up and then kind of let you hear it in deeper uh, right now. Check this out. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bypass this back and forth as far as this compressor and then I'm gonna show you how I set up the technique. Let's have it bypass first. And what I want you to do is pay attention to the vocal. I want you to pay attention to the clarity of the initial vocal sound when it's bypassed or when it's unbypassed, sorry about that. Listen close. It's like six in the morning. You told me you running late. You still there recording. I respect it, I know the rules. I know it's important. I know the music comes first, but sometimes I wish you was human. Now it's eight in the morning. You see me trying on suits and ties. So when it's on or when it's not bypassed and when it's engaged, you can hear that initial sound of the vocal feels a little bit less unbothered. You still feel the reverb, but it feels a little bit more subtle and it feels like the clarity of the actual initial vocal sound is cutting through. If I play this along with music, you'll really, really feel that difference. Well, you'll notice that vocal just shines and it feels unbothered by the reverb, but it's still there in the place of it. I didn't uh, change any pre-delay times or reverb times to achieve this. I literally just used side chaining in order to duck the reverb when the vocal was there so that when it's not there, it fills in the holes and I'm getting that effect of the reverb. Let me show you exactly how I set it up. So what I did was this. I went to my vocal, right? and I created a send. 
basically this send is what I'm saying, hey, vocal, I want you to send a copy of yourself out somewhere. So I happen to go to bus five, as you can see, and I turned it up to zero. So now a copy of my vocal is being sent out to bus five. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on over to my reverb track or aux, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up a compressor. And on this compressor, I'm then gonna go for Pro Tools. I'm gonna to go to the side chain or key input, and I'm going to say, hey, I want you to listen to input or bus five uh, when it comes to your compression. So now it's listening to bus five. So now my vocal is getting to this compressor. So now every time it hears my vocal, it's going to apply compression to this particular chain here where the reverb is and duck it. Like so, look at it. It's like six in the morning. You told me you running late. You still there recording. I respect it. I know the rules. It's a it's a very subtle effect, but it's so effective when it's in your mix and things like of that nature. Please make sure you listen on headphones and monitors so you can really, really hear this thing and feel it. If you're hearing it on a phone, amazing. So, what are my settings for my compressor? Long story short, I'm getting about 6 dB of gain reduction. Realize I'm not too concerned or worried about, oh my gosh, I have so much compression. Use your ears, feel it out, see what feels right, and then go from there. I use 6 dB because in the back of mine, I said, okay, if we duck the reverb 6 dB, that should be enough to kind of get out of the way of that vocal so that when it comes back in, I got a nice big reverb that goes up 6 dB um, when there's nothing there. So it feels like this big reverb, but as soon as it hears a vocal, it just takes it right back down and moves it out the way. That's why I like doing it so much, and that's why I feel like it works for me. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but I like it. I love the sound of it, and maybe you could use it as well. Let's take a look at my attack and release settings. Right now, I have it at about a fast to medium attack and about a slow to medium release. I still want it to grab, though, I guess the initial transient information of the reverb. I want it to grab it pretty fast, but not too much where it just kind of feels smushed and just completely taking the front of it out. But I also want it to feel a little bit smooth and I can accomplish it feeling smoother by taking the release also and making it slower so that it makes the reverb a little bit more lush. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Use your ears, try it out for yourself and find the settings that work for you. So just to add to this, another cool thing and a way for you to get creative with this is, say for instance that, hey, I like what I'm doing as far as the reverb ducking. What if when the reverb gets ducked or when there's no information coming to this actual reverb, meaning the spaces, I want it to boost that up 4 dB. So basically what's gonna happen is every time that there's no sound or there's no signal coming into the side chain, it's going to basically have a 4 dB boost of the reverb in general. So you're adding about 4 dB of gain to the entire reverb in totality, but now when the when there's no signal and there's space, you're gonna hear a big, big significant jump in the reverb, which can be a cool creative effect. I'm not saying this is the greatest way to do it, but it also is a way just to open your mind up to what you possibly could do with this. So let's listen to this with a 4 dB boost at the makeup gain side of this. Check this out. It's like six in the morning. You told me you running late. You still there recording. I respect it. I know the rules. I know it's important. I know the music comes first, but sometimes. So do you notice that when there's space or when the vocal uh, has no signal and there's a gap, you feel that reverb just swell and bloom. And this can be a super creative way to do a lot of different things. I'm just trying to open your mind up to how you can use the side chaining and reverb to really give you some really, really cool effects in your mixes, vocals, or whatever the sound source uh, that it is. Uh, this is a really great technique. It's great for helping you achieve more clarity, fidelity in a vocal sound or any sound source, in my opinion, um, when you do want a reverb, but at the same time, you wanna maintain that sound, you want it to be heard, and you want it to be more felt. So, I hope that that was helpful. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, make sure that you follow us at Help Me Devon, and you can become a paid member of this channel by hitting the little join button down below. Uh, it, it's awesome. You get a bunch of money in our store every month. You also get exclusive access to content episodes from the My Audio Nerds podcast, which drops every single Wednesday, and a bunch of other things. We really appreciate the support. Uh, I hope that you guys like that. Please let me know in the comments below what else you would like to see. Um, and uh, until next time, you guys.